and here we are. Welcome to TBS Total Barber and Stainton with me, Ronnie Barber, and him, Paul Stainton. Paul Stainton, that's right. What, what are you wearing, by the way? What's the shirt? What's that? What? Is that a line shirt? What this? Oh, what you mean? This? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's just uh, it was announced today. Uh, the lines are a tour in South Africa, mm-hmm. and uh, d- d- just one sec. D- do they make them shirts in children's sizes? Yeah, they do. Uh, but the uh, I got the call from uh, Wazzy. I call him Wazzy Wazzy Gatland, and I am the official podcaster and DJ for the tour. Right, <laughs> it was me, Judge Jules. Uh, uh, right, we were up at the final, so I've been selected. I am the official podcaster. And wow. if the disco, the do run run disco on tour with the Lions in the summer. It's sorry, uh, you didn't get the call, Paul. I don't even think. All right. You, you, I, got... when, I, you know, when the big guns are there, you and Judge Rinder, then, you know, I expect him to go Judge, with the big Judge, one of them. Judge Jules, mate. Judge Jules. Oh, Judge Jules. I thought you said Judge Rinder. No, no, no. <laughs> Judge, Judge, Judge Rinder. <laughs> You're right, mate. I'm oh, fine, thank you. But what's what's going on with these lions? Well, why is he not picked Johnny May? What's the matter with this Welsh fool? No, um, I don't know. Uh, eight, eight Scottish players. Are, that's like double what we thought was going to go. So I'm chuffed to bits. Uh, plus, well, it'd be brilliant because Scotland have been great, haven't they? Because they play one day and they don't play the next. Yeah, well, that, that, yeah, it's not their fault. That was the French. Yeah, the French. We'll talk about them. French. Range. Yeah, listen, before we get any further, can I just say well done, Posh, because they got promotion to the championship, um, went 3 0 down just because they could, you know, trying to create a bit of drama and passion. So they let three goals in so they could come back, you know, with that drama at the end. You know, they knew what to do. They like to do it the hard way. It was never in doubt. And I'm pleased for my old mucker, Ben Stevenson, because he was commentating. So he's now part of Posh folklore along with. Edwin Overland, Bob Burrows, and A.D. Mole. So, well done, Benoit. Uh, it's, uh, it's good. Um, uh, Cambridge United at the weekend, they've got uh, Grimsby, who are going down. Uh, so, they've got to beat them. They've got to, you know, to get this uh, promotion. So, fingers crossed for that. It'd be great to have the two of them uh, getting promotion, wouldn't it, It would, Paul? because I, I don't have a good word to say about Grimsby, to be fair. It's a pretty grim place, and I'm glad they're out of the football league. Stinks of fish. Oh, that's no nice. There must be other smells in Grimsby. No, it's it's mainly fish, Main, mainly fish, and the humber stinks. All right, okay. Um, uh, loads of things to talk about today. Uh, Paul, I'm very excited because mm. I feel pretty Patel. I didn't feel it. Uh, I feel pretty Patel. Um, mm. Come out, the Home Officer. Come out. Um, uh, the allowing high achievers uh, to get uh, to go to the fast track of getting British citizenship. Ah, uh, wow! In the, art, in the arts and in the, the science and everything. So, um, if Oscar winners, Emmy winners, uh, Golden Globe will all be faster. If they want a British passport, they go. So, what about Gillard? Gillard winners? And he, well, you not are you not a British citizen then? Well, well, I don't know. I that, think so. Yeah, yeah. But I just wonder. I could. Well, I just wondering when I could sneak somebody in on me Gillard. That, you know, some some refugee from Mexico or something. Wow. You know. That's a euphemism. I stuck somebody in my villa. Uh, so that means that Forrest, people like Forrest Gump would definitely get a, a, a passport. Uh, Rambo, not a real person. Not a real person, Forrest uh, Gump, mate. It's a documentary, but a boy that started to um, prawn things. Uh, Rambo, the boy, that, yeah, that, that, he's going to get a... Uh, oh, yeah, I'm not so sure about this one, but he is in a, an Oscar. Oh, Hannibal Lecter as well. Uh, they're all going to get British... Uh, See, gonna, uh, uh, what? I think you get yourself mixed up there with uh, people who are not real. A bit. I think it was Ted Cruz, the uh, the Republican, who got a bit mixed up with Jason Bourne this week as well. He was claiming that they were going to send him to Russia until somebody pointed out that Jason Bourne didn't, in fact, work for the CIA. It was a film. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... Uh... I, I love this kind of uh, cultural reference, but I'm really pleased. Welcome to Blighty. I'd love to get Forrest Gump in here. I'll, I'll, I'll sign that off because it'd be nice to have somebody him there as well. But he's going to struggle with his shrimp boat, isn't he? Where's he going to dock it? <laughs> Good point. Good point. We don't... Bubba Gump. Bubba Gump. Bubba Gump. Bubba Gump. Bubba Gump. Bubba Gump. What? Talking of boats. Good link here. Talking yeah. of boats, as we speak on election day, 2021 uh, make sure you're all voting people 
we can't can we mention anything about the election or are we not allowed to because we're well, strictly speaking broadcasting aren't we no, yeah yeah but we're not we, we we're not telling anybody how to vote we're telling people just to vote but if, if people don't want to vote that's entirely up to them as well mm -hmm. uh, it's sitting on the fence and it's nice on election day that uh, Boris has sent the gunboats to Jersey to to take on the mucky French. I don't know what you were singing, but your fish boats are ringing. Get them away from Jersey. Yeah, that's, mm. that's an interesting kind of thing. It's it's like a it's like the, you you won't remember this, Paul, but we had uh, we had fish wars before with Iceland, that major military force. Cod wars, uh, the yeah. cod wars in the seventies. I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah, we well that kicked off, and so I'm I'm surprised the French are even thinking about it. But yeah, they, they apparently invaded Jersey this morning. Fisher boats. Is that right? Yeah, well, apparently, um, and um, that we've we, we've got a French frigate over here, and we've got um, so it's two British frigates over here. But our frigates are bigger than their frigates, yeah, so right. their frigates going down. Our frigates going to take on their frigates. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, frigate wars. Is, I, 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 it's about time, and it, but it will be nice, and it's good on an election day as well to see. You know, uh, I would. I was surprised that Boris didn't send a task force. I thought well, it worked for Maggie, didn't it? When she was down in the polls, she went and took on the Argies. Uh, so, uh, you know, it works every time. But he's up in the polls anyway. He hasn't re And I'll let you into a little secret, Ronnie. Or well, 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 what? what? This dispute with France and Jersey, nothing to do with fish. Nothing. Isn't it? What is it? No, no, no. Darling? He sent the gunboats to Jersey to protect their offshore accounts. Do you know what I mean? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Jersey. Yeah, that's where all their offshore accounts are. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. <laughs> Send them all. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they keep them in the lobster nets at Cape May on Jersey. I don't know if you know. It's lovely up there in Cape May and the sun comes over the yard. Oh, beautiful. But that's where all the offshore accounts are and some lobster nets so that gunboats are going to protect them. They won't actually be going into St. Helier or anywhere like that. No. Oh, right. So there's not a full-scale invasion going on. St. St. No. Helens or whatever it's the, the capital is not going to be... Yeah, because... Oh, well, St. Helens is in Lancashire, mate. They play rugby league. They, they, never mind. Never is that, mind. Is that where the ooze or the cam goes? Does it go that way as well? No. No, no the ooze. The ooze is in Yorkshire. What's the, what's the name of the Yorkshire and meets St. Helier. Oh, right. Yeah, I know it's St. something. Yeah. St. Helier. Yeah. yeah. They, well, don't, they don't have rugby posts and strange balls and have to give it back after six tackles. They don't do that. But it does worry me, this, this, this escalation. Right. Because, you know, they did say... That you know, it being in the European Union is why we've not been to war in 50 years with the rest of Europe. And now we've got this, we've got gunboats in Jersey and yep. us against the French, and potentially Belgium having a go as well. Belgium what? having a go. Wow, well, they only do what? what? They're going to attack them with waffles or what? Well, yeah, they get fries with mayonnaise on. Yeah, because yeah. obviously, you know, landlocked country. But Belgium has now inadvertently annexed a part of France. An irate farmer decided to move a border marker blocking the route of his tractor. Uh, the incident took place near the town of Eregrin, uh, which sits sorry. along the border sorry, opposite. I'm, hey? you know I'm just taking notes, mate. I, sorry, just for the, the, the sort of uh, preamble we do for it. So, where was that there again, Paul? Just. Where was it? In Ergenwin. Ergenwin. <laughs> um, you know where it is. It sits along the border opposite the French town of Bussigny sur Oh, no, you're talking. Does the ooze go through there? No. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, the mayor of Bussigny sur isn't pleased uh, because uh, the mayor of Ergenwin, uh, David Laveur, is reported to be happy that his community has grown by more than two metres at the expense of the French. But this is what worries me, Ronnie, here. What? This what? is how wars start. This could be World War Three here, Ronnie. Mm -hmm. You know, Napoleon, he invaded Belgium, didn't he? Do you remember a few years ago when he tried to take Brussels? Do you remember that? Yes, he did. Yes, good point. Good historical reference, nice. He was on the funny app, wasn't he? That yeah, he went the 
Well, and funny why. And you keep a, you, a bit of magician, you should keep a rabbit in there and produce it just whenever he... Yeah, he yeah. And, and that doesn't stop wars, you know, producing rabbits. So we've got to be careful here. I think we, everybody should rein back a little bit because, you know, look at Napoleon as the example because if it hadn't have been for the Duke of Wellington at Waterloo, which also is in Belgium, I didn't realise, we would be eating beef Waterloo on a Sunday, Ronnie, and splashing in puddles in our Napoleons. Disgraceful. Yeah, disgraceful. Well, I, I, I do hope there's some kind of diplomatic. I, I, the great thing is we know it's Dominic Rab that will be leading the diplomatic. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not the other fellow who gave the contracts to the ferry company that had no ferries. What was his name? Yeah, um, oh, Grayling, Chris Grayling, <laughs> Captain Disaster. No, whatever he touches, closes or smashes up. But but if you remember, Dominic Rab was the one that was amazed that, that how how close France was to Britain. Remember, he, <laughs> he didn't realise there was a sea in between either, which was quite worrying. Um, on the serious side, Paul, I need to, um, and this is not going to sit well with you. Uh, okay. But I think it's time we we have full disclosure uh, on the podcast, the TBS podcast. Uh, I saw this story, Paul, and I'm sure you're um, you're uh, sort of. Swa your swams are a bit petty. Your palms are a bit sweaty. <laughs> you know when somebody mentioned to you on Facebook Live the other night, what do we do with the outtakes? And you said there aren't any. Uh, <laughs> we keep them in. No we do. Um, Andrew Marr was paid at least £5,000 for a Zoom call while well fund, uh, with well fund from BBC offices, while Justin Webb, Dan Walker and Emily Maitlis also topped up their salaries with corporate work document show. Now, uh, this is interesting, Paul, because they're paid at least £5,000. The BBC say you have to publish what you do, mm. but £5,000 is the limit So, you'd, of your declaration. You can actually earn more than the 5000 or less than the 5000 mm. 5000 So it could have earned more than that. Um, stars must check with their head of department to avoid a conflict of interest. <laughs> uh, so... They're going to publish this quarterly, wow. starting with the first three months of 2021. So, um, have you done this on purpose to get me angry? No, no. Yeah, yes, I have, because <laughs> I know that it, it rattles your cage in a big way. Well, it rattles my cage somewhat because <laughs> oh, these people are all very, very highly paid members of the BBC. Yes. Now, when I left the BBC three and a half years ago, after being treated not too nicely. Um, I was told I couldn't do any work for anybody else anymore because it would be a possible conflict of interest, despite the fact I was paid a paltry sum and I wasn't charging £5,000 to make a video for anybody. Uh, and when I gave these examples, people higher up at the BBC said, that's different. Yes, I remember you having that discussion. And it, <laughs> I suppose it is different. You just didn't earn enough, Paul. That's the thing. Yeah. The more you earn, the more you get away with. That's the key. That's the key. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But it, I mean, it's good for them to take on some extra money because you know, you know, when you're on two hundred and fifty k a year, you know, plus, you know, you've got to take a few other things, Paul. Um, and I, I, I'm going to say the elephant in the room, Paul. Let's just talk a wee, a wee bit about this. You have, of course, as you just mentioned, uh, have some kind of dodgy dealings while you're working in the BBC and using your name. Did I? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, as a radio presenter, um, uh, you are not the first to stick your snout in the corporate trough, Paul. Let's be honest. Is that uh, true? Yeah. You were, of course, the face of Piddly Pedlos, uh, earning 75 every time you mentioned it. This is really smelly. In your disastrous radio show, you get Piddly Pedly, uh, Piddly, Piddly Pedlos. That's another one to take out. <laughs> No, before you mentioned outtakes on your Facebook Live thing, <laughs> we never did. We never cocked up like this. Um, so there's that, or uh, how you use your BBC reputation when you used to run party for thongs for the memories. You remember that? Aye. Thongs for the memories. When you were given a year's supply of thongs for nothing, but it does explain how you walked. But I think the, the really the, the horrible one, Paul, was when you sold a auctioned off your bald patch. <laughs> uh, and you exploited your name as a top presenter uh, uh, and you, uh, to the highest bidder, of course, who got it? Shanghai Lils, where, <laughs> you, where you worked at the weekend. And I thought, oh, that you didn't declare that. But I think in full disclosure, do you want to apologise to the listeners for you know, abusing your 
position as a top rated radio presenter? Well, not really, Ronnie. These were all local businesses that deserved uh, a bit of a mention and a bit of a leg up. You know, I was just doing my bit for local uh, businesses in Cambridgeshire, you know, and I, I've done a lot for Piddly. Have you done? What, what have you done lately? <laughs> well, I built, I built Piddly up. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes. So anyway, um, I think it's appalling. You shouldn't have to get, go and get another job. Be, we must pay, pay the presenters more, Paul. So they don't have to go and auction themselves up. Well, you know, I agree in local radio, because if I'd been paid a little bit more, I wouldn't have needed to do anything else to make ends meet. But there you go. Um, anyway, moving on, moving on from the BBC stuff. Uh, well, I say that because I, I don't know about you, but, you know, I was a bit disappointed with the line of duty at the weekend. Did you watch line of duty? The last one? I stayed up for it. I stayed up until nine o'clock and, you know, until ten. Oh, yeah. Well, to, I mean, for me, it was more disappointing than Mr. O'Reilly's building work at a well-known boarding house in the southwest. It, it just what? What was I? I, I thought I, I kind of knew it was that guy. Did you Buckles, the yeah. weakest character in the whole show, who nobody had ever thought of, who got locked up, who, who everybody disregarded because of his accent. Yeah, but, yeah, but you know, and you've never heard of a bad. Brummy, can you? you never, it never happens. No, I well, thought you can't have a brummy mastermind. Can I? Can I? Can I have some more cake, please, Hartley? I tell you what, I bloody shoot you. You can't. It's, it's preposterous to have a brummy mastermind, isn't it? Brummy <laughs> mastermind. That's a bit. Isn't that a bit semi-racist or something? But but no, well, it's it, it, it's accent snobbery in a way, Ronnie. But it's it's gone on for years, hasn't it? I mean, accents do hold people back. I mean, your good self. Um, you know, you, you could never imagine a Geordie as prime minister, could you? Or Jamie Carragher being the voice of the speaking clock. Or this clock. All right, All right. it's two o'clock. I mean, I watch Jamie Carragher on Sky Sports sometimes, and I just can't understand a bloody word of it. I don't know what he's... He, he could be talking about cricket, for all I know. <laughs> I, I do think it... Of course, uh, there was that big invasion at, uh, at Manchester United at the weekend, and somebody threw something, didn't they? Some of the fans threw something at, uh, at Liverpool, uh, or at, at um, Jamie Carragher and the, that other guy. Um, to, could people get in. Um, I, think they, I think Man United will lose points, do you? Or do you care? Well, I, 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 I don't care, to be honest. But, you know, Jamie Carragher's got form. He likes to interact with the fans, normally via the power of spittle. Um, but, you know, you remember he, he, he spat on that car driver that time. <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> the guy was driving past him with the car, flicking him the Vs, and he wound the window down. <laughs> wow. uh, so he, he's, he's up for a bit of two-way stuff, is uh, Jamie Carragher. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Would you like, Mr. Stanton, would you like a, a, a pestin question? Would you like a pest? Have you got another pest? Have we got time for a pest and question? Yeah. I've, got, a, fit, I've got to fit me gag in yet. Yeah. It's a fairly short one, this, Paul, because I wanted you to, uh, with your media training ahead on, I want you to mm. uh, dissect the style of this question. This is uh, right at the start of last night's uh, pest and thing in programme. And he said he was going to interview his first interview. He was Tom Watson. Listen to the rhythm of this, Paul, and, and just... Mm -hmm. See what you think. Tom, um, I'm going to start with you. Um, what's the minimum, do you think, that Keir Starmer Labour has to do tomorrow for I don't know, your former colleagues as MPs, activists to feel that he's doing an OK job? Whoa, no. <sighs> That's what's called the downhill question, isn't it, Paul? We're, we're, oh, yes. He's at the top of the, uh, the top of the question. He goes down. He needs to pick up his speed, pick up his speed, and then he kicks off. Do you think? Do you think that's that's a good method of a question? Well, well it, 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 it's sort of a downhill thing, but he, he, he sort of goes around a few cul-de-sacs before he gets to the bottom, doesn't he? And sort of puts commas in the wrong places. This is good, and and his intonation <laughs> is all oh the. The shop, you know, and it's just, I, I, I don't know how he gets a job, to be honest. <laughs> let's hear that again, Paul, with that, with that complete dissection of the style. Let's hear that again. And Tom, um, I'm going to start with you. Um, what's the minimum, do you think, that Kit Dharma <laughs> uh, Labour has to do tomorrow mm. for, I don't know, your former colleagues as MPs, activists to feel oh, that he's doing an OK job? Big, but, all right, so, yeah. Uh, 
Perfect, Paul. Thank you very much. That's, and that's for all the young uh, radio presenters or uh, you know, journalists. That's how you ask a question. Uh, yeah. Or you can do it a different way. Uh, get, you know, get to the end a lot quicker and you'll get more questions in. But, you know, that's for amateurs. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anyway, thank you very much for that uh, lovely kiss. Paul is a media consultant, aren't you? Guru. I'm a guru. You're a media guru. <laughs> yes. I think, <laughs> I think that's... Um... Yeah, um, cross-legged when he's leading the production meeting with no underpants, and you could see his ideas. <laughs> Both of them <laughs> <laughs> talking of ideas, Ronnie. Why are balls so funny? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Nickers, knackers, knockers, oh. and <laughs> knockers, knockers. Thank you. Um, Thank you. What a lovely day for, yeah, sticking your thingy in an envelope and saying, well, how's that for an opening? I think, I think that's why Les Dawson was so funny. He was so naughty, so on the, oh, dearie, so beautifully funny. Yeah. So beautifully funny. Uh, much missed Les Dawson. Anyway, uh, talking of ideas, let me know what you think about this idea, Ronnie. Um, the Duchess of Sussex, Megan of the Markle, oh, yes. has written a book. It's called The Bench. Now, it, it's, a, it's a huge DIY book, a thrilling account of bench building for the rich, a step-by-step -step guide, if you like, on how to instruct your servants in the art of bench building, um, uh, for how to get the butler to use a spanner properly, to precision woodcutting for ladies-in-waiting. Um, the chapters in the book include Benches Are Better Than Thrones, 99 Problems But A Bench Ain't One, and A Bench For Life. <laughs> Uh, and next book, by the way, is going to be is going to be called uh, the Stool. I'm not sure what that's about, uh, but uh, she's she's not the only celeb uh, this week, Ronnie, to get a book out. Have you seen this? Is this it? Yes. I may have picked too early though with 99 problems, but a bench ain't one. Um... <laughs> it's true. Thank you, everybody. Uh, see you next time. We're done. <laughs> Anyway, I bet you can't guess which 80s pop star, or oh, a bit of a crooner, Ronnie, has released a book about his amazing life. Um, well, Have I, a guess. Um, uh, Rick Astley. Uh, yes! Yes! Is it Rick Astley? It's, it's Rick Astley, Ronnie. Oh. <laughs> yes! That is a guess. <laughs> That's amazing. So we didn't do that. Yeah, the, uh, the lovely L Lancastrian uh, has written a book uh, detailing his rise to fame from Lancashire delivery driver, true, to international singing superstar. His book, Ronnie, is called Up. Great. What a great idea. Up. 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 Lift up. Don't forget that. It's yeah. important. Up. Up. It's integral to the gag. Up. Because that's the way his life's gone, Ronnie. Yes. Up. Up. Oh, now, Rick. <laughs> uh, you're laughing at your own jokes. No, I'm sorry. You know, I, I've been waiting all week to get this out. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the actress. Uh, Rick is big into his books, Ronnie. I don't know if you knew this, no. uh, as well as his 12 inch singles. Uh, Rick is big into his books. In recent years, he's collected over 50,000 books as Rick Astley, Ronnie. And um, not, not many people know this, but he's, he's, he gives back. He tours the schools of Lancashire in his Lancashire. rickshaw. Where? Lancashire. Lancashire? <laughs> well, at least he's not St. Helia. Uh, he tours... <laughs> and St. Helens is in Lancashire. So he tours the schools of Lancashire in his rickshaw uh, with his best friend, Pete. They've been together forever. And uh, he gives the books away for free to the kids of Lancashire to encourage them to read Ronnie. What a great thing. Oh, great that, thing. that's lovely. That's, that's real. That's using your fame for good. That's lovely. Yeah. And the kids can ask, ask for any book they like, from Moby Dick to The Shining. And Rick is, is always pleased to give them whatever they ask for. But just a warning. Yes. Just a warning here, Ronnie. What's his new book called? Oh. Yeah. Just a warning, kids of Lancashire, if you're listening. When his new book... Go on. <laughs> when his new book, Up, Up, comes out, don't ask for that one when the rickshaw turns up at your school. Why? Because he's never going to give you up. <laughs> never going to let you down. <laughs> never going to let you down. 
Never gonna, never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Oh, Jesus. oh dear! It took me a while to come up with that, but yeah, uh, you know, there you go. No, but I think that's lovely. <laughs> uh, I think it's good uh, that people can see how you can shoehorn uh, 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 sort of a joke into never going to give you up. Hey, listen, do you want to hear about Barry? Not Barry, Barry? Fry. Yeah, not Barry Fry. I want to talk to you about a goat named Barry. Okay. Yeah, uh, a goat named Barry spotted on the loose in Fife. Now, in Fife, not a lot happens, Paul. All right, I have to Isn't tell it? you. No, there's not a lot that goes on in Fife. Uh, Unless they score four. I guess four far? Mm. They got five. Um, goat named Barry spotted on the loose in Fife as it runs down the residential street. Now, this is a, a goat that got out. Um, the farm animal, which some animals, uh, locals have named Barry, was spotted bolting along the street in Urquhart. Urquhart. In, in what was that? Fife. Um, uh, there's pictures of the goat sprinting along uh, the street. Now, Paul, what would you have done with that? Uh, this is, again, almost a learning thing. Uh, well, I, I think, I think I can answer that straight away. I think a nice curry. No, I would have done with, as a phone-in. Oh, sorry, sorry. What would you have done with a phone-in about a, a wild goat called Barry running down the streets of Fife? Is there something there creatively that you could have done after 10 o'clock, say, uh, after you've done your big uh, conversation thing? Would you have run with that as a phone-in? I'm just pitching the idea to you. How, how would you have... You know, well, there's a few things you could do there, Ronnie, isn't there? You know, um, you could do uh, funny names you've got for your pets. You could do animals that you've seen on the loose in the wild. Um, and um, you could do um, uh, ring in if you call Barry. That's my favourite, to be honest. Ring in if you call Barry and, and tell us why. Who are you named after? Because there ain't that many famous Barrys apart from Barry Fryer. Barry Cryer. Barry Cryer. Barry, Barry Humphreys. Barry White. Barry Guy. I mean, if you were named after Barry White, you'd have, you'd have to look a certain way, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Barry Norman. To Barry Norman. Barry Norman. Yeah. yeah. Film 76. Yeah. We're going back a bit now, but they... anyway. Well, thank you. I, I, again, Paul, I, and, and I'm a bit naughty, but I just want to kind of pick your brains and how yeah. you work creatively because it's good for lesser broadcasters to see how you can turn something like that into a little piece of radio magic. You're going to pinch that for the Facebook Lives you're doing, aren't you now? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Very much. Are we going to talk about Bill Gates? So we're not bothering. Oh, um, let, I think it's important. Let's be honest. You know, the, the two of them be, have been so brilliant about spending their money. The mm. But they're going to divorce. And how will they separate everything? How are they going to split up? Well, I, I've got the I've got the list here. Um, they've got to split $130 billion. Um, da Vinci artworks, private jets, luxury homes, including the $125 million futuristic eco-mansion called Zandu 2.0. Um, and, you know, this is this is after 27 years of marriage. I, I didn't realise that what you got for your 27th was a decree nice side, but apparently, yeah, that's correct, you do. It's, it's the way the, uh, the big entrepreneurs work, my friend, you know. Mm. But at least, as I uh, commented in your little post, at least they've got their memories. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, 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 it's, and it's not it's not a divorce in the traditional sense for Bill Gates. No. It's more of a control alt delete. <laughs> the, the geeks will love that. Those geekies that turn in, they only come in for like a couple of seconds, but they'll go. Yeah. They've made a joke. Control yeah. And all for all them COVID deniers, by the way, twenty seven years of marriage, and his mind control vaccine has failed on his first subject. Yes, right. exactly. Exactly. Mind you, at least they'll be able to kind of, um, they'll have the least, I would imagine they've got a laptop. They'll probably get a couple of apples between them, haven't they? Mm. they probably I, I, I've, just got a, I've just got a message, actually. Apparently, they've, they've worked out who's getting what. Uh, Belinda's getting Belgium and most of the Caribbean. Uh, Bill has to make do with America and the Republic of Congo. So uh, wow. that's pretty good. Well, it's fair, fair enough. Hey, listen, you know, we've gone through the, the, the pandemic. Uh, it looks like it's going to become an epidemic. Um, which is, is one down from the pandemic. Um, but um, just when you can, thought you could relax, Paul, uh, let me tell you, Japanese knotwood is back in a big oh, way. Yes. No, I know really? You, yeah, I know you love your garden. Now, this Japanese knotwood, Paul, everything, well, it's a plant. This plant eats brick. 
It can act. <laughs> you know, it, it does. It can, it can dismantle bricks. It spreads out and it's hard to kill. Right? It's like giant haystacks. Right? He was hard to kill. You know? But he, this thing just spreads out. And I thought, what is it with God at the moment? What is, what is it, you know? Uh, well, give you the big pandemic and you can deal with that. And then we think, okay, we can relax, get to the garden centre, and then we discover Japanese mm. wood. Are you suggesting by your analogy with giant haystacks that we, we bring in Big Daddy or Kendo Nagasaki? Is that what yeah. you're saying? We attack the knot we, with uh, old wrestlers. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. Well, I hadn't thought of that, but that's maybe, mm. that's maybe an analogy too far. One Mick McManus. We're going to get Mick McManus out, his big black trunks. Jackie, Jackie Thingy, Jackie Thingy as well. But, Jackie know, thingy. Yeah, and, and, and Kendo, Jackie Palo. Jackie Palo and uh, Kendo Nagasaki, right? Aye? Yeah, we don't. Who was Kendo Nagasaki with the man with the mask? Nobody knows today, you know? I couldn't get the mask off. But I just want to put that like, because I thought, Paul, we should be bringing in some more gardening. Gardening seems to be uh, something that uh, Monty Dawn, for instance, he, he's got big audience figures, big followers. Maybe we should eat wheat time. Eat. No, I, I think you're getting it wrong, mate. They're, they're not tuning into Monty Dawn, they're tuning in for the dog. Yeah, sorry, I, it's it's week time. What the hell does that mean? It's week time. It's ever since we talked about that Facebook Live, I'm cocking up like a good one today. Um, I don't, just, that's just to let you know that uh, it, it, just watch yourself with your Japanese knotwood. You had it here first on TBS. Yeah, and if you are, by the way, if you are going shopping this week, be careful if you're in Bromley in southeast London, uh, because a man has completed a six year challenge to park in every single <laughs> car parking space at his local Sainsbury's, and now he's threatening to move on to Lidl. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> this loser, uh, sorry, Gareth Wilde uh, from Bromley. Uh, said he decided to take on the challenge after noticing his preference for certain parking spots. <laughs> Quote, for the last six years, I've kept a spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> Listing every parking spot I've used at the local Sioux market in a bid to park in the mall. This week, he tweeted, I completed my magnum opus. It kind of feels like the old Panini sticker albums, but a really boring version of it, he said. Oh, oh mm. no, mm. See, seriously, wouldn't that have been a great phone in that yeah. week that I've cleaned it? Because I don't know about you, but I, I have certain parking spaces that I <laughs> tend to use. Do you? I always try and park as close as I can to the outdoor without parking in the child and mummy spaces. Yes. Uh, but he says the best space in his car park is C1. Uh, <laughs> C1 on his spreadsheet. He says, he, he yeah, says, it turns out there are lots of questions about car parks. No, there aren't. There aren't, actually. No, <laughs> there aren't. What was the last thing? I can't remember. But, but, but the thing is, see, I know this is great because... There are spaces that I'll go to, and I know that um, that they're close enough and um, and wide enough that I won't get in. But I'll never park next to an old car. I never park because people just go. <laughs> but I have been known uh, when Daisy's uh, when I get the child uh, seat in the back of the car with the Daisy's car, Chelsea, I will park in the mum's. <laughs> so I park in the mum's spaces, even though I haven't got Daisy. But I've got. Do you? <laughs> They're, they're wider. Do you get out and walk? Do you get out and walk quite effeminately to the door? Sachet. Yeah. Uh, but I've got an, I've got a, an alibi already. Whenever I say, "Hey, where's your, where's your?" Oh, I just dropped her off with her mum inside. Yeah, she's with her mum. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, good effort. Um, well, good that, effort. that well, on that um, the bombshell, which is magnificent, uh, and what I could have done with that is a phone in. Oh man. Mm. Your, your little routines, the things you do. You're quite clever at this, Stanton. That's good. Um, Thanks very much. Now, you can contact us, uh, Paul, at psmedia.org.uk, uh, Ronnie at uh, ronniebarber.co.uk. Um, uh, what was the other thing? And I do a Facebook Live as well, which is very popular. Now. I try to contribute from time to time when I get a minute. Yeah, but why are you always funnier on those than you are on this? That's what I don't get. What's that? You're right, mate. Have you just? Yeah, I'm just been. She's shouting at me. I've got Bill's wife in the car. She's ready. She's already got steamy windows. <laughs>